Okay, so here's what we want to do. Um, for the past few weeks, we've been having conversations about money, right? We've been having conversations about how to increase our capital, how to basically make more money to avoid SACPA. So what we want to do this morning is very simple. It's a game, and I'll give out the instruction. So it's a singing competition, and as usual, there's a prize to be won. There's one Sierra Rubber Range Rover outside. It's for the lucky person that wins this game, all right? So here's what we'll do. I'll need two persons from each row of seats. Two persons here, two persons here, two persons here. But majorly one person, and the other person is your backup singer. So one person, and you will call another person to be your backup singer. So let's start with this role. This is role A. So I need one person to volunteer. If you don't volunteer, I'll call somebody. Role A, one person. Please, sir. Thank you very much. Please pick your backup singer. Who is your backup singer? Pick anybody to be your backup singer. You guys should cherry more. Pick anybody to be your backup singer. See this lady, she's in resonance. She doesn't officiate today. Anybody, anybody, anybody. Just point. Please come to, sir. All right, row B. Who is in row B? Who is representing row B? Row B, who is representing you? Anybody, anybody, anybody. Anybody, anybody, anybody. Should I point? Please point somebody. Anybody this really leads you to point. In fact, the lady beside you, Oyin Damola. Dami, stand up, stand up, stand up. Dami, you are saying no to the work of the Lord. Oh yeah, now let's go guys, let's go guys. Anybody, anybody. It's not a difficult game, I promise. You don't want to win Range Rover. It's not a difficult game. You have range already. There's nothing wrong in having two. Oh yeah, let's do this, let's do this guys. One person, one person, one person, one person. One person is a very simple game. Very simple game. Very simple game. Why are we waiting for them? Somebody from row C. Resonance, are you ready? Do you have somebody already? Oh yeah, row C, who is coming? Who is coming? The lady with the beautiful shades. Yes, please come. Thank you. Oh yeah, who is coming for row B? Um, Janet. Come, 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 come. Just turn around, turn around. Do it. Turn around. Come in like that. Come now, come. Pick your backup singer. You present pick somebody from row B. Pick somebody from row B to be your backup singer. Who is your backup? I, I love it. Oh yeah, row C. Where is, the, where is the person I pointed? Please put your hands together. They guys should cheer her up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, who is your backup singer? The lady in green, Abby. Both of you sat down together. All right, love it. Okay, please put your hands together for them as they come forward. Where is Janet? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, come. She has pointed you. Just follow her. It's a very simple game. Don't worry, I promise. There's a prize to be won, you guys. Okay, so I want you to give your team a name. You're presenting resonance, Abi. One name. Can, no, no, no. Can, I'm, I'll follow your lead. You're the lead singer now. Okay, this is team resonance. Put your hands together for them. What's the name of your team? Team what? Unique. Team unique. Please put your hands together for them. <laughs> What's the name of your team? What's the name of your team? I, I, I don't understand it. Okay. The team of peace. Please put your hands together for them. Zenith. Zenith. All right. So we have Resonance, Unique, Zenith, and Peace. All right. Very simple. So here's what we're doing. I'll give you a word. I'll give you a word, and you sing a song. Now, your song should not be a secular song. We're in the house of the Lord. Right. So, for example, if I, if I, if your word is sakpa, so your song is sakpa, sakpa, no fi catch me. Is that clear? Do we understand? Do we understand? Do you have any question? There's only one rule. Your song should only two rules. Your song should not be a secular song, and it should not be composed by you. It should be a song that at least some people here will know before you come and drop your album here. Yeah, but have you released the song? 
Uh, if, you have, if you're a song writer and you've released the song already, that's fine. Great. All right. Let's start with Team Resonance. Let's go with ladies first, are we okay? Let's say ladies first. Let's say ladies first. Yeah, you what? Yeah, you what? <laughs> All right. Your word is money. You have 15 seconds. Who is that? Money, money, money. You have 15 seconds. No. You would have your different word. 10. This year, blessings. Money, testimony. Good, good they follow, follow. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right. Team Zenith, your word is... I'll give you mic. Your word is dollar. Take mic. Sing it. No, just sing it. You, who knows? People here might know it. You're, you're still doing recording. We've not even it. Yeah, do the chorus. Dollar, dollar, dollar. <laughs> okay. Team Peace, right? Okay, Peace. Your word is Wura. 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 If you want, if you sing it, if I catch you. If you sing it, if I catch you. <laughs> There is a very popular song that has Wura in it. Try, try. You can, you can assist him, oh. You are blank, too. Love it. Go, go, go for it. Go, go. That thing your spirit is telling you to sing, sing it. You might be right. Should we give it to Resonance? Kini Wura, Simi, Kini Silifa. That's a very popular song. Okay, resonance. Why well, would I give you Sakpa? Your word is Owo. That's Yoruba for money. Oh, oh, Nikoko. Oh, I know this song. It was David that sang it. Yes. David in the Bible, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're going back to... This is the last round. Um, your word is wealth. Wealth. Your word is wealth. Somebody is giving you song, Dale. Hey, sing it. What's my own? <laughs> Wealthy in the Lord, we are well Wealthy in the Lord, <laughs> amen. I mean, <laughs> remix is allowed. All right. Your word is Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> All right. How much time do we have left? All right. Your, your word is very simple. Naira. Very simple. Naira. 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 Our currency. I should show you sample. <laughs> Naira. Naira. Very simple. Ah. You say what, please? Naira ti moni kole wa mi de leo. Mumi de leo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now I want to shake you. I want to shake you. I want to say yes. Thank you very much. We have who else has in sack? Resonance. I think we know the winner already. 
All right, resonance. Your word is ego. You can sing it. I'm I, will, I won't be responsible for it. <laughs> they are giving you mic. I mean, it should be a gospel song. By the grace of God, it should be a gospel song. Until you sing, you are responsible for it. <laughs> you can, you can. The resonance is giving you song. Diego. <laughs> All right. Oye di kachuku, omalicha, akuliche mahon, pulea elu, pulea Jesus elu. All right, thank you very much, guys. Who is the winner? No, 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 it's not. Resonance, you got only one song correct now. What was the first one you sang? What was the first word they sang? Unique is the winner, Joe. Thank you very much. Your Range Rover is backed outside. You do us. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys.
Whose hope is not in the arm of flesh? Whose hope is not in horses? Whose hope is not in the horsemen? Whose hope is in the Lord? 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 Come on, sing. Jesus. Jesus. 
that every knee, every knee, every sickness, every weakness, every depression, every weakness, every confusion, it bows to you, it bows to you, it bows to you, it bows to you. One more time. Come on church, let's lift up our hands wherever we are. If you are online, connected by live stream, please lift up your hands wherever you are and just connect to the King, uh, the one we are here to see, the one we are here to receive from. Come on, lift up your hands all over this room, church. Lift up your hands. Uh, oh Father, be exalted, oh God, and let your kingdom, let your kingdom reign in this house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of us are truly expectant this morning? Hallelujah. Uh, we don't have much expectant people in the house this morning. And this expectation is going to be jacked up by the help of God this morning. Hallelujah. Let me see your hands once again. If you are truly expectant in the house this morning, you are here to receive from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see more hands to encourage me. Hallelujah. But we are not here to encourage me. We are here to receive from God. Hallelujah. 
this morning we are going to be praying together and we are going to be helping each other in the house this morning hallelujah we are here to receive from our king and god's word will prevail here this morning in the name of jesus hallelujah praise god hallelujah one of the most dominant word our father dr k was in town you know to release over us the word prosperity pastor shola has also been emphasizing you know the word prosperity it is god's will for us to prosper in this house and god's word is going to be coming afresh this morning hallelujah 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 god's word is going to be meeting each life wherever you are this morning hallelujah i'm not sure there are people as expectant as i am this morning in the house hallelujah so we are going to be praying this morning but before we do that i would like to show you how to do this for the few minutes that we have to pray this morning please this is not the time to sit down i would like you to hold the hands of your neighbor if you need help in the place of prayer but we're going to be doing this with much fervency this morning hallelujah immediately i would like you to please project the scripture hebrews 5 verse 7 hallelujah we are going to be praying god your word must reach me where i am this morning my heart is open to receive your word every single thing you have in store for me i receive in the name of jesus beyond every reason why you're in church today the god's word reaching you god's word being able to transform your life must be your priority above all hallelujah hallelujah hebrews 5 7 hallelujah scripture says about jesus that during the days of jesus is um, Jesus is being on earth that he lifted up his voice in prayers and petition hallelujah with fervent cries to God to the one that is able to save him from death how many of us know that um, poverty that um, poverty is part of the offshoots of death hallelujah hallelujah so this morning we are going to be praying with the whole of our hearts this morning that God with every single illustration, let your word reach me where I am this morning. Every single thing, every single utterance, let your word reach me. Let your word truly transform me. I need a word from you in this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need a word from you. Today is not another day to mark attendance at Brandua Event Center. It's a day to be met by you. It's a day for your word to truly transform me. It's a day to be truly transformed. All round transformation transformation hallelujah to the one to the one that is able to save you to the one that is able to transform your life i want you to lift up your voices this morning and begin to lift up fervent cries to our father fervent um, fervent cries to our father this morning come on lift up your voices all over this house Father, we reach for all that you have for us in the house this morning. If you have a prayer language, I need you this morning to join me in raising up your expectation, in stirring up the atmosphere this morning. If you need to lift up your hands while we are praying, lift up your hands. If you need to dance, begin to dance in the spirit in expectation of all that God is going to accomplish here this morning. Rapa tu kole, elete poroto, i 
Shana Barani, a Roman on Namanone, a Rapalada, a Rapalada, a Radaba, a Radaba, a Sota Colada, a Lata Paladiosa, a Roman on the Colada Valabadosa, a Radada Colada Barosa, a Yaya, 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 a Come on, pray, 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 pray. A rupa ti ala bahasa da mande. Reke tele barago mondo fele ganda ba de flera da stefenga gante dada. I want to give you one more minute to lift your voice to God Almighty this morning. I want you to do it intentionally, like you are about to position yourself to take something that would change your life forever and ever and ever and ever er gata na manda bara de gala de lebra de bala gata no moda bele gata ezikaria da don directa veno rita van de sta pila gata la da esha lebrona gatila galaga adus em enga and inga ai kaladenda in the name of jesus we have prayed somebody shouted a believing amen Come on, shout at me, say in the name of Jesus, everything that I have prayed for, I receive now in the name of Jesus. Come on, you want to make some noise to the Lord and give him thanks in this place and you can have your seats. Hallelujah. As you sit majestically, I'd like you to look to the person seated on your side, to your right or to your left. I'd like you to prophesy over them this morning. Say, my dear neighbor. Oh, you don't sound like a prophet this morning. Tell them, say, my dear neighbor, God answers my prayers. And I want to prophesy over your life this morning. Come on, say, God's will is prosperity. And his will will be done in your life. Somebody said, amen. Oh, I can't hear you. Come on, say, amen. Somebody say, my, um, my covenant with God is greater than my geography come and say i am blessed and you are blessed glory be to god hallelujah before we go further quickly um i'd like you to please bring out your phones and let's share the link to this beautiful service today uh, i feel a warmth and an excitement and a joy in my heart for what is about to happen to us such revelation such light somebody say amen so we need many more people to join in. Please take the link. It's bits.ly forward slash the new live stream. Or you can go to our YouTube page and just be an evangelist and share the button. You know, let's share it. Number two, um, this morning also, if you're online as well, we like it. Please share the button. And let's share the message to everyone in our communities. Put it on WhatsApp, Instagram, your Twitter. Let's get many more people to join in. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This season, uh, we have also been emphasizing an assignment that God gave us. One soul, one disciple. Somebody say one soul. Oh, church, I like to hear it louder. One soul, one disciple. God has given us an assignment to be more invitational and outreach conscious as a church. And there are three things that I'd like you to um, take home with you where one soul, one disciple is today. Maybe it can wake up a desire inside of you as you carry this on. Number one, who do I think needs Jesus? You need to look in your environment, your household, your workplace, your circle of friends. Who do I think needs Jesus? Number two, who do I think needs the word, the word of God? The Bible says the entrance of your word brings light. There may be a lot of darkness around that person's life and he just needs the word to bring light into his life. Who do I think needs the word? And number three, who do I think needs community? Why? Because when the person gets born again or joins the church, what we see is the person is able to fellowship with other believers. And Bible says that be not deceived, bad communications corrupt good manners. Maybe the person doesn't want to do the bad things that he's doing right now. He just needs the right community to encourage him and provoke him to love and to good works. So those kind of people are the people that you can reach out to disciple and to invite to church. Somebody say, I hear. Oh church, I can't hear you say, I hear. All right. Hallelujah. Who's ready for the word this morning? Oh, I wish I'd get some excitement. Who's ready for the word this morning? 
All right, with a lot of joy and excitement in our hearts. If you can, please just welcome our pastor, Pastor Shola Okodua. Come on, church. Let's, let's celebrate. Let's make some noise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right, I'll give you one more, one more opportunity to do just that. Let's celebrate our pastor as he brings God's word to us this morning. Let's put our hands together. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You're welcome, sir. Amen. I was trying to take off my jacket and PD didn't wait for me to finish. So I'm going to do my own back. So <clears throat> let's put our hands together and welcome PD back on stage. And let's put our hands together and welcome him out of the stage. I just lift your two hands to heaven and thank the Lord. Tell him you love him. Tell him you care so much. Lift your hands. Lift your hands up to God. Thank you, Lord. If you are seated, I would like to ask you all to be stand. Please stand. And we, every time the word of God is about to, to come forth as a church, we have a culture of standing up. So I want to encourage everybody going forward. The moment the word of God is about to start, we stand up. This is a culture in our church. Are we together? Can I make that louder? Can you make that louder? Are we together? Praise the Lord. Okay. Put your hands on your belly and declare these words with me in the name of Jesus. Oh, let me talk to the supernatural army. Say, in the name of Jesus, the word of God dwells richly in me. In the name of Jesus, I have the supernatural capacity to birth everything written concerning me in the name of the Lord Jesus there is a mighty river inside of me and this river brings brings to me supernatural increase the force of this river opens chapters doors of favor in my life this river is the Holy Ghost. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, every single time I pray in the Spirit, I see results by the force of the Spirit. So right now, right here, I pray in the Spirit, I will see results because of that which I'm going to pray about. Open your, right, your mouth and begin to pray in the Spirit. Mora bara si zafar ke tele mundo so bara tele gabaha. Shere manga para da kabaron tolo boso kaboron tolo gabaha. Shere matondo ko bara tele boso sabahatas. Jesus name we pray do you believe you received that what you prayed about right now are you sure all right let me ask you a question what did you pray about what did you pray about some people didn't even know what they prayed about what did you pray about you, you prayed the confession that I, I declared with you Yes or yes? Do you remember any part of that confession? Do you remember? All right, I wanted to say it in your English language, that confession you remember, just say it and say, I receive it right now. No, no, don't just say I receive it right now. Say the confession part that you remember and say, I receive it right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you look really good today. 
it's so obvious that the grace of God is all around your life. Look for somebody else. Tell them, neighbor, you look so good today, as usual. And it's so obvious that the Lord is about to take you to another level. Look for one last person. And tell that last person, my dear friend, look at what is on your head. Only you, this much oil, this much grace, what a wawu wawa. Hallelujah. Put your hands together to the Lord for the Lord. All right, you may be seated. Praise the Lord. Right. Today we are teaching on the subject of stewardship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you today. Thank you because of your presence that is very tangible in this place. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your tender mercy. The Lord says to tell somebody under the sound of my voice that this week you would experience his mercy. You would experience his mercy. You would experience his mercy. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. The accuser has been shut up just because of you. You would experience his mercy. Look at me, everyone. Let, let, me, let me tell you something. You have to play with me very well. Yeah. Look at me, everyone. You see, when the devil can't catch you in front, he tries to push you from the back. I'll explain what that means. It means that you are going on your spiritual journey, and it seems as though the devil is trying to stop you. He wants to stop you, but it, it doesn't seem like he can stop you anymore. So what he tries to do is to go to the back and try to push you whereby you begin to look at time as a currency, as a reason why things are not going well in your life. So he tries to push you into thinking time is going, things are not working, things are not happening for you, and you get pushed by that. Listen to this. God is for you. Oh my goodness. I said God is for you. Is somebody listening to me? God is for you. Usually, when I come up like this to say these few things before I start to teach, in the place of prayer, the Lord would ask me to deal with some things by just teaching or saying some of these things, and that's why I say that. In Exodus chapter 5, something very powerful happened. This was God here telling Moses to go and speak to Pharaoh, Exodus chapter 5, verse 1 all the way down, and said to Pharaoh to let my people go. And so, here comes Moses goes before Pharaoh and tells Pharaoh, tells Pharaoh this. He says, God says, let my people go so that they can hold a feast for me. And Pharaoh looked at him and said, who is your God? But this is a very interesting part. Let's, let, let me go into all of the other things that happened there. But this is a very interesting part. Can you all hear me? All right. Me, sound, please. I need a little bit more this thing. I can't quite hear myself. This is a very interesting part. Make it fuller. It's usually better than what I'm hearing here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this is a very interesting part. Thank you. It's that Pharaoh then looks at the children of Israel and says to them, so you think you are less busy. And that's why God is sending Moses to come and meet me to say that you should let my people go. Okay, no problem. Because you can hear God, I will show you that um, I'm the one in charge here. So he says to them, 
from today, don't give them straws, don't give them bricks anymore. And they have to produce the straws, they have to produce the bricks, and they have to get the job done at the same time that they used to get the job done before. Look at what happened to the children of Israel. They went back to Pharaoh and Moses and said, why, why did you come and disturb us? We we're doing just fine before. Why did you come to us? Leave us alone. Now we are doing straw. Now we have to still complete the time of the job at the time. Look at what happened there. The Bible says in the last verse, in, in the next chapter, Moses went back to God to inquire of God. And God said to Moses, said, see, I'm now going to prove myself. <laughs> Let me tell you the high point of this. The high point of this year is that whenever God gives you a word and you tell it to Pharaoh, the next thing you will see is pressure. Did you hear what I said there? Whenever God gives you a word and you tell it to Pharaoh, the next thing you will see there is pressure. In other words, God gives you a word and then you begin to declare it. The next thing you see is that everything will begin to contravene all the things that you were declaring before. The moment you see that, let me tell you something, Pharaoh is already bowing down. Let me tell you what happens to people. What happens there is that the moment that happens, you then begin to look on the outside and say, this thing is not working, this thing is not working. Listen, the reason why Pharaoh is reacting to give you more work to do is because Pharaoh knows that this thing that has come out, the reaction of Pharaoh, that's why whenever you begin to see things like that in your life, you are declaring a word concerning something, maybe in your finances, maybe in your business, maybe in your career, maybe in your job, maybe in any aspect of your life, and you're declaring it, declaring, declaring it, and all of a sudden it seems as though the things that you were declaring, you are seeing the opposite of it. Let me tell you something. Every time the devil tells you the opposite of something, it is true. I'll explain what that means to you. If the devil tells you that you are the tail, then you are the head. Glory to God. If the devil tells you that you are lacking, you have no money, then you have money. Are you following what I'm saying? Every time you see an opposite reaction, there is a reaction in the realms of the spirit that has caused the devil to react that way. Are you following what I'm saying? Do you see what Moses did? Let me tell you the powerful principle in that place. The very powerful principle there was that Moses did not back down with his words. The moment he said something, they increased the work rate for them. He did not say, ah, now that they've increased the work rate, it means this is not working. What did he do? He went back again. The same words. Same words. I want to give you a, a very short minute to do something. You know those things you have been praying about that you are seeing contrary reactions to? That doesn't seem to be working. Take one minute and speak against it again. Everybody, one minute. Release your words on those things one more time. One minute. Praise the Lord. Have you done that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the sun and give it the glory praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord saw a vision, you were standing before a door and you were declaring the words and it's almost as though the words were bouncing back at the things you were declaring and then there is another open door that is right open before you and you want to take that door. That door you want to take is the easy way out it doesn't lead to destination for you stay with that door that doesn't seem to be backing down and keep speaking over that door 
Keep speaking over that door. Lift up your heads, O ye gate. Be lifted up your everlasting doors. Keep speaking over that door. Listen, walls understand pressure. And your words are spirit and they are life. The more you keep speaking over that door, it is pressurizing that door. Are you following what I'm saying here? Just continue to speak over that door. When you begin to see things in the external begin to affect that which you are saying, you're speaking over something and it's almost as though you're speaking concerning your health. Health, for example. And the more you speak concerning your health, your health begins to deteriorate more and more and more. The moment you see that, know that there is a chain reaction going on. Pharaoh is bowing down. He's only just putting some guards in the natural that would make you think that he's not backing down. But truly he's backing down. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? Is that a word for someone? Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord. All right. This morning I'm going to be teaching on the subject of stewardship. Kingdom stewardship. This is a very important subject. A subject that we need to bring a lot of teaching to and a lot of balance at the same time. The subject of, of K-Dub stewardship is one that many people are aware about. Many people understand. But maybe not necessarily the intrigue cases that comes with the subject of kingdom stewardship. As humans, it's very likely that when you are on the earth, everything that operates in your life and everything that happens in your life, you think it's your own power and it's your own strength. And that's why this subject of kingdom stewardship is very, very important. Now, let me just throw a bait out there. When you hear the word stewardship, what comes to your mind is, how do I keep for God what God wants me to keep for him. But look, this subject is broader and bigger than just keeping for God. It's way beyond that. In fact, it's the genesis and the totality of our Christian journey as well. And so this morning, as we begin to explore the subject of kingdom stewardship, I'd like you to open your heart and open your minds and open your spirit. They are opened. And so that we can explore the subject critically in Jesus' name. Let's start out by opening the text, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 5. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 5. I'm going to read from the, the message translation. And from the message translation, we'll go all the way down. I'm going to read Genesis chapter 2 and verse 5 all the way to verse 9. And then I'm going to skip some parts and then we're going to all the way to verse 15. And then Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 to 6. So I'm going to start, I'm reading the message translation. At the time God made heaven and earth before any grass or shrubs has been sprouted from the ground, God hadn't yet sent rain on the earth, nor was there anyone around to walk the ground. The whole earth was watered by ground, on the ground spring. And God formed a man out of the dead from the ground and blew into his nose reels the breath of life. The man became a living soul. Verse 8. Then God planted a garden in the east, watch this now, in the east. And he put the man he had just made in it. And God made all kinds of trees grow from the ground, trees beautiful to look at and, to, and good to eat. And the tree of life was in the middle of the garden, and also the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. Let's skip all the way down to verse 15. And God took the man and set him down in the garden of Eden to walk and to walk the ground and to keep it in order. Let's read that verse of scripture together, everybody. Verse 15. One, two, ready, go. And God took the man and set him down in the garden of Eden to walk the ground and to keep it in order. All right, let's go all the way down to chapter 3 of Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to read from verse 1 all the way to verse 6. And the serpent was clever, more clever than any wild animal God had made. He spoke to the woman. Do I understand that God told you not to eat from any tree in the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, not at all. We can eat from the trees in the garden. It's only about the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, do not eat from it. Don't touch it or you will die. And the serpent told the woman, you won't die. God knows that the moment you eat from the tree, you would see what's really going on. Let me read that again. It says, you will not die. 
The only thing is that once you, once you eat of the tree, you would see what's really going on. We're going to find out what's really going on there. And, and what's really going on. And you would be like God, knowing everything, ranging all the way from good to evil. And when the woman saw that the tree looked good, it looked like good eating and realized that and realized what she had, she would get out of it. She knew she would know everything. Pardon me. She took and ate the fruit and then gave some to her husband and he ate. Praise the Lord. Let me explain the scripture to us. So here was the serpent who came to meet Eve and said, wait, did God really say you should not eat out of this tree? I said, well, God never said we should not eat. The only thing he said to us that we should not eat out of the tree that is in the middle. So he said, look, don't worry about that. This is what we need you to do. Go and eat of that tree. Because the problem is what God doesn't want you to know, God doesn't want you to know what is really going on. Just go and eat of that tree, and the moment you eat of that tree, you know what is really going on. Listen to this. This is the high point of kingdom stewardship. In other words, I create the garden for you. Tend it, keep to it, but you see there is one that is left for me. Don't touch it. In other words, everything is mine. You can have every single thing, but at the end of the day, I'm the owner of everything. The concept of kingdom stewardship is different from ownership. In the body of Christ, many times we understand what God gives to us as ownership. But listen, everything God gives to you, you ought to steward it. You are not the owner of the garden. He's the owner of the garden. God puts you in the garden to first tend to the garden. Attend to the garden. Keep the garden. Take care of the garden. And you ought to steward that garden. Now, what the devil was trying to make Eve know is, look... The moment you eat of it, you will become like God, which means you would now become the owner. Did somebody get what I said there? Is somebody following me? He says, you're not going to become, you are now going to become the owner. But God's plan for us is not to be the owner. God's plan for us is for us to be the steward of the garden. So the serpent said to her, look, you can as well take the same right as God. You can become the owner of the garden. Just eat of that tree then you're going to become the owner of the garden. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 24, I need somebody else to play the keyboard for me. You are not getting my keyboard, please. I'm struggling. Um, where is this guy that played Chima? Yes, All right, you can shut it down. Thank you. I'm, I'm moving the prophetic office. You shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. Thank you. I move in the prophetic office, so if, if you've worked with me all those years. And so you see, I always use music and mysteries to, to move into things. Amen. Don't worry about it. First time I'm going to preach without this, I'll be, I'm hearing music in my soul. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says in Psalms 24 verse 1, are you with me? Somebody say amen. amen. Make it louder, say Amen. The Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It says, the worlds and they that dwell therein. In other words, the whole earth that we see is the, is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The worlds and they that dwell therein. Look, when it says they that are dwell therein there, it means that he owns everything in the earth, including the people that are on the earth. Including the people that are the earth. The people that are on the earth are still, well, that's why Jesus says, occupy till I come. In other words, occupy till I get back. In other words, if I give you to occupy, by the time I'm getting back, you are giving it back to me. Is somebody following me there? The high point of kingdom stewardship. That you don't own anything. You are only a steward. A steward is first a custodian. Write that down. A custodian. A steward is a caretaker. Think about it this way. Imagine you have a house, or maybe you're not even the owner of the house. Imagine you, you're renting a, a, a house, and you have a legal tender. They give you the right of the house. You sign maybe three years lease, and it's your house temporarily. Remember that the moment you sign that lease, it's your house temporarily, but you are not the owner of the house. You are not the one that built the house. The person that built the house has the right. Somebody stay with me, please. Don't get distracted. The person that built the house has the right over that house. 
So you can have the house temporarily, you can own the key temporarily, but the moment the person who owns the house, who built the house, comes into the house and says, um, I want to know what is going on in the house. I hope you know that you have to let the person know what is going on in the house. Because you are not the owner of the house. You are a temporal owner of the house. The key that was given to you is just to signify that you are the custodian of the house at that season that you have, you've, you've gotten that property. That's how it works with us in this kingdom as well. Everything God gives to us, you are not the owner. You ought to steal what he has given to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me show you a scripture. This is very, very powerful. Luke chapter 5 and verse 1. Luke chapter 5 and verse 1. Okay, if Chima is there now, you can play for me. Thank you. Increase the volume. Thank you, Lord. Luke chapter 5 and verse 1. Let's read this together, everybody. One, we're going all the way to verse 9. One, two, ready, and go. Next verse. Let's read that again. I want you to see something there. One, two, ready, go. No, verse two. They were washing their nets. Next verse. Verse 3. Next verse. Next verse. Verse 5. Nevertheless, at your words... Next verse. Let me teach you, let me show you something there. What was the powerful principle Jesus was trying to prove to them here? You own the boats, but I own the fishes. Did you see that? So you can have the boats, but your boat cannot catch fish. In fact, your knowledge of fishery cannot catch fish. After I have used your boats, I can make you catch fish. In other words, you are the custodian of the boats. I am the owner of the boats. I am the owner of the fish. Give me the boats. Are you following what I'm saying there? And then you will see how mighty fishes you can catch. The power of custodian. Glory to God. This is the concept of everything God gives to us. You are a custodian of it. He gives you a garden. You are not the owner of the garden. You are a custodian of the garden. Tend to the garden. Keep the garden. You are a custodian of the garden. You are not the owner of that garden. What the enemy makes wants you to feel is that you own the garden. So he tells you, go and eat what will make you own the garden. Go and eat what will make you think you are the owner of the garden. You are not the owner of the garden. You are a custodian of the garden. You are a I, 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 I want to even say this to you. Even your life, that like you say, my life, my life, my life. He gave you that life. You are a custodian of that life. Look, if you understand this thing where cost, being a custodian or a caretaker is concerned, you would say that the supplies, look, it will put a peace in your heart. That your life and God's supplies where your life is concerned, you are just a caretaker. The owner of the house must ensure that the property is good and the property is fine. You are only a caretaker. Think about it. If a house is bad and the landlord is somewhere in Jamaica and the caretaker is in Nigeria, and the, the roof has gone off, what would the caretaker do? He will call the landlord. The caretaker cannot fix it with his money because he's only a caretaker. The problem is you are trying to assume the role of a caretaker. So you are trying to fix problems with your own strength. Nobody sent you to do that. Call the landlord quickly and say, look, your roof has gone. Oh, okay, how much is it? 10K, 20K, 30K. Oh yeah, send the money. The moment he does that, he sends the money. The work of the caretaker is to ensure that the job is done. That's the work of the caretaker. To ensure that the job is done. But the supplies, the source. Are you following me there? The source is not the caretaker. 
The source is who? The landlord, the owner. Let me show you something. Watch this, everybody. Let me unlock this. I have so many analogies to show you guys today because I want you to get this concept very well. Has this happened to you before? You innocently gave somebody a gift and the moment you did that, you, you lost your peace. Okay, let me just focus on this then. I want to put it where people can see. Remove the banana. So this is a blender machine, right? All of you that do fit farm and all of those things, this is your day. Now watch this. You see how powerful, you can close, come right now. You see how powerful this machine is? How powerful this machine is? It's so powerful. It determines if you're going to eat the fruit just naturally like that, or you're going to have it sort of like as a juice. So it's very powerful. I hope it's closed very well. All right. So, watch this. Okay. I don't know how to do all these things. Hey, they used to put water inside. I always just think that the things has water. This one, he has not done it before. He has not done it before. You will know this man has not done this thing before. He wants to pour everything inside. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Watch this now. So hold it. On top. Maybe we should use a woman for this. Let's get a female protocol, please. Clap for them, please. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you for your love. We have to run. We have a lot. Thank you, Lord. You know how to do it. All right. So, you see how powerful this, um, what's the name is called anymore? Okay. Blender. You see how powerful this is. Um, your fruit is the same until you put it into a, bre- a blender. So, I turn this on. And it's blending it. It's having a hard time blending, by the way. I'm not trying to do a cooking class in this place. I just want to give a quick analogy. Okay, it's working. Just assume it's working perfectly. Right? So just assume it's working perfectly. Now, watch this now. Stay, stay with me, everybody. So, this is blending it. Why? Now think about, look at this. I remove this. This blender is still powerful. This blender can still blend this fruit. You can still have your juice or your smoothies from it. But I'm turning it. I'm turning it. I'm pressing, putting pressure. It's not moving. Why? Because it's disconnected from the source. The moment I fix it back to the source, I can blend it. As powerful as this thing is, the source is what powers it. Without the source, it is powerless but beautiful. Without the source, it is beautiful. It has the potential. It has the capacity. It can do everything that it's supposed to do. But as long as it's not connected to the source, it remains powerless. Listen to me. When it comes to the things on the earth where your life is concerned, there is a source. The source is the owner. You are the custodian. Your own work is to roll the dice. 
It's Jesus that gives six six. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying there? Just stay this thing connected to the source. The moment it is your own, my family, my house, my church, my business, my, 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 my. Look, anything that has to wear is a monster. You are a custodian. I want to heal people from what is holding people back. Why sometimes we are not seeing results. Look, your boat is, is useless until Jesus comes on it. You can try all the tactics of fishery you know how. But as long as it says cast thy net to the other side, that's when you can catch fish. The power of source. Glory to God. Thank you very much. Did somebody get me there? And so, everything you have on the earth, and that's why I wrote something here down and I wanted to write it. Very powerful. A steward is responsible for the owner has it in his name. The steward is responsible for the thing. The owner has it in his name. You understand now the parable of the lost son, the parable of the prodigal son. Everything was fine. He could live in his father's house, eating, having a good time until he said he wanted to be the owner by himself. Until he says he wants to be in control by himself. He was living in his father's house, eating well, having good food, living good life until he said, I want to be the owner. Let me tell you something. Owner has responsibility. It has weights. And if you want to be the owner, you don't have the capacity. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the capacity to be. Look, how do you explain how you want to move your life from point A to point B when you don't even know what tomorrow looks like? You don't have the capacity. It's only the owner that has the capacity. Glory to God. Maintain your lane of custodian. You will see how the owner will ensure that your house is built well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me give you another analogy. This would really help you. We're still talking about kingdom stewardship and how God gives you a garden. He says you can have everything but leave that one for me because I want to show you that I'm the owner of everything. So let me show you something. Please give me the, the, analog, the second analogy I asked for. I was praying about it this morning. I was saying, how do I pass this message very powerful to the hearts of the people without saying so much so that they can see that their life is not really their own? You see this thing about my destiny, my journey, my job, my life, my, if you understand that you are not the owner, it will put less pressure on your journey. The source is more committed to the outcome of your life than you calling yourself the owner. I want to fulfill destiny. I want to fulfill destiny. You are just a custodian. Praise the Lord. So let's look at this. Not you guys. Um, I asked two people to, to do this with me. So come. Bring my, the bags of clothes. Just come. You know what? Can, can you help me move this stage over there? Is this okay there? Okay. No, no, don't worry. Thank you. Okay. So watch this now. Imagine him is, is going for dry cleaning. He wants to dry clean his clothes. So he comes to the dry cleaner and then he greets the dry cleaner and says, look, I want to dry clean my clothes. These are all the clothes I need to dry clean. I'm going for a party next week. In two weeks' time, I need my clothes back, especially that white clothes. So please dry clean for me. Do it very well. Wash it and make sure it's looking very great. And so the dry cleaner decides to get on his job and gets to work dry cleaning the clothes, washing it very hard as a very great dry cleaner. Let's give him two more minutes to wash more. This guy just likes to pour water. One thing I found in service today, this guy likes water. Now, it's dry cleaning the clothes and is washed it very well. Remember this. Who is the owner of the clothes? 
This guy. Who is the dry cleaner? This guy. Who, the owner is this. The custodian is who? Now, if I come into this guy's office and I see clothes, I've never met this guy before. I'm going to just assume that, wow, why, how come you have so many clothes like this? Because I've never met this guy before. Is the dry cleaner is the owner. Now watch this. The dry cleaner is done with his dry cleaning business for the day and then he goes out. And the owner as well have dropped his clothes and then is gone out. I want you to watch something there. Because many of us, the way we are, we weigh, and I'm going to tell us 10 things we must steward in our lives. 10 things we must steward in our lives. The way we are operating, it's almost as though we own everything and God just needs to support us are you getting what I'm saying God just support my, my drill support the things I'm doing change the perspective you own this life do whatever you want to do with it are you getting what I'm saying and your prayer language will change the moment you stop seeing yourself as God support me God help me my helper God, are you, you now see yourself as the person who is only doing his beat on the earth Whoa. Praise the Lord. Now watch this now. Then the owner of the clothes is going out for a party. And is going out on this very interesting party that he washed the clothes for. He's getting ready. And then What do you think has happened right there? Never expected it. All of a sudden, the owner of the clothes is going out for the party, then the dry cleaner forgot himself and thought, because they gave me the clothes, I'm the owner. Because they gave me the talent, I'm the owner. Because they gave me that door, I'm the owner. Because they gave me that wife, I'm the owner. Because, are you getting what I'm saying? This is what many of us do with God. We give you five talents, take, tender, keep till I come. And then what you do is you wear it as the owner. And you are walking up and down with it as the owner. There is no sense of honor for the one who gave you everything. That at the end of the day, even the life that you say, my life, I can't live my life anyhow. Somebody gave you that life. Kingdom stewardship is number one identifying that everything that exists in your life including your breath is owned by someone and that's God everything in your life your career your business listen when you understand this concept title will not be a conversation we're having in church that anyone that gives it to me has the power over it are you getting what I'm saying that's exactly what has happened to these people now you know that Kasala we boss if you don't owe them now fight will happen in one minute why you wear my clothes why you know where, why my no because he thought he's the owner he forgot himself because something was given to him to be a custodian he changed that place of being a custodian to become the owner how many things in your life have you owned do you realize that the reason why some people are not entering into new things in their lives is because even your prayer sounds like you are the owner. And since you are the owner, run and make it easy. You are the owner, right? You don't own anything. He owns everything and gave you to, cost, to be a custodian and a caretaker of it all. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for them. Quickly, I want to show you 10 things in your life that you must be a true custodian and a true caretaker. Ten things. Number one. Let me show you something, guys. You, you, now you understand what God did to Abraham. 
I want to make you the father of the nations, but I have to teach you what it means for you to be a custodian. Even the son of promise, I would ask it from you so I can prove that I own it all. Then Abraham took his son and was going up to the mountain to kill the son. The son looked at Abraham and said to him, we don't have a lamp of sacrifice. He said, surely we will come back together right here. He got right there, laid the son, and I was about to stop the son. Then God saw that I have truly seen that this guy has made me the owner, not just a custodian. Because sometimes we intersweet the place with God. It's almost like God is a custodian of your destiny and you are the owner of the destiny. So you are praying to God as a custodian and you the owner. That's why you're not seeing things going on in your life the way it ought to go. And God says, don't worry. Because of that which you have done, I'm going to make you the father of the nations. Why? Because you understood the power of what it calls, what it means for me to be the custodian, to be the owner of everything. In other words, if I can give up, look, the God that gave me Isaac can give me many more Isaacs. So God wanted, and this is one of the things God does in your life. When God, one of the trainings you get as a new creation is the training whereby God, and it's many times it starts with money first, where God begins to break the back of your belief on what you call it is mine as strongholds. And some of these things are strongholds in your life. There's strongholds in your life. God wants to make you only a custodian, not the owner. Glory to God. Now you understand that if your phone gets bad, you can't fix it yourself. You have to send it to the people that can fix it. This is the real problem here. Many people are trying to fix problems of their life. Take it back to the owner. The owner knows how he produced it. Take it back to the owner. You are just a custodian. The custodian can only operate. The custodian can only maintain. The holder knows how to fix. There's a difference. There's a difference. Praise the Lord. Ten things in your life that you must steward. Kingdom stewardship. Number one. Your money. I will tell you why I put money first. Because... Many religious people here would have said the number one thing we should put there is my life. No, I'll tell you why I put money first. The Bible says you can't serve God and mammon. Money is a powerful thing. That it was placed very closely, God and mammon. Are you aware that there was only one place in the Bible where Jesus said in his parables and it says that thou good and faithful servant. It was when he had to do with money. He said, thou good and faithful servant. The importance of money. Remember the parables of the talent. When God gives you, let's, let's look at Matthew 25. Before, let, let's look at Matthew 25. Let's start from verse 14. Matthew 25. Somebody say, I'm a good steward. John chapter 17. Hold on. Let me check that text. I want to show you something there before I go into you. Aha. John 17 verse 6. Look at this text. Look at Jesus' prayers here. Let me read it in the message translation. It says... I spelled out your character in details. John chapter 17 verse 6. I spelled out your characters in details. This is Jesus speaking to God here in prayer. To the men and women you gave me. Look at this. They were yours in the first place. Then you gave them to me. This is Jesus praying. No? He says, and they, have now, and, and they have now done what you said. They know now beyond the shadow of a doubt that everything you gave me is first and from you. For the message you gave me, I gave them. You see how, you see how Jesus was equating it back to God. He says, the message you gave to me, I gave them. He says, they took it and were convinced that I came from you. They believed that you, were, that you sent me. I pray for them. 
I'm not praying for the God-rejected world, but for those you gave me, for they are yours by rights. Look at how Jesus was talking. Now you understand when Jesus can pray and lift up the five loaves of bread and two fish and say, Father, I thank you because you always hear me. He was talking from a custodian. Everything I have, you own it. You gave it to me. Look, if your prayer language begins to be like that, you will see many results in your life. You will see many results in your life. That I'm a steward of destiny. I'm a steward in this journey. I'm stewarding God's purpose for my life. I'm not the owner of the purpose. I'm only stewarding it. Praise the Lord. Did somebody get me there? Let's look at Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Thank you, Lord. Let's start from verse... Let's start from verse 14. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling in a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. How, how do you deliver goods to servants? He didn't quite say slaves here. He said servants. The word servants there are custodians, not necessarily slaves. Do you understand that? All right. He says, Who delivers goods to his servants? Verse 15, and to one he gave five talents. In fact, let's look at it in the message translation because the message translation used money. It says, it was also like a man going off on an extended trip. He called the servant together and delegated responsibilities. To one he gave $5,000 and to another $2,000 and to a third $1,000 depending on their abilities. Then he left. Right off, the first servant went to work and doubled his master's investment. The second one did the same, but the man with a single thousand dug a hole and carefully buried his master's money. Verse 15, 19. It says, After a long absence, the master of those three servants came back and settled up with them. Look at that. Very important. After a long time, the master will come back. Now you understand, occupy till I come. It's not your soul. Just because I say you should occupy doesn't mean it's yours. Till I come. The class is till I come. I'm coming back. And by the time I come back, I want to see what you have done with the thing that I gave to you. Are you a faithful steward or not? Stewardship. And say, verse, verse 20. His master commanded him, good work. You did your job well, for now I would be, you would be my partner. Verse 23. Verse 22. The servant with the 2,000 showed up, showed how he had also doubled his master's investment. His master commended him, good work. You did your job well for now on, be my partner. Verse 24, the servant, gave one th the servant giving 1,000 said, Master, I know you have high standards and eight careless ways that you demand the best and make no allowance for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you, so I found a good hiding place. <laughs> and secure your money. Yeah, it is safe and sound down, safe and sound down to the last cent. What does it mean to steward money? It means that everything God gives to you as a source of income, it's not yours. It's his own. Listen to this. When it comes to stewarding money, how you spend money matters to God. Are you following what I'm saying here? How you spend money matters to God. Emotional givers, certain doors get shut in their life. Do you understand what I mean by emotional givers? You went out with your friends just because you are five. It doesn't mean you have to be the one to declare for boys. You get there and you just want to show that everybody, you're just spending every time, every time. Look, if you are very sensitive and you are a believer, something sometimes will go off on your inside when you are spending that way. Sometimes that money, the problem is sometimes many people have given the seed of their future and spent it with the natural things of the now. So you're just, giving, you're just spending the money anyhow. anyhow. When he gives you money, every money you have has seed inside. The problem is people have eaten their future in their seed. 
steward your money right. Don't spend money anyhow. You know, you can finish a month. The month can come to the end, to an end, and then they give you salary. You know that first one week of how you, you're excited the moment salary comes. You go to the best restaurant in town. You call everybody that, where are you, where are you? They've not heard your voice for three weeks. All of a sudden, where are you, where are you? You say, let's meet there, let's meet there. Then you declare, you declare, you declare. And your seed of the future, you have eaten it in declaration. Steward money right. Know the money that comes to saving. Know the one that goes for spending. Steward money right. Something happened to me last year. I realized that something dipped in my finances. I've never really gotten to a point where I never had money. I, I, I've, never got, I've never been there in seven years. Where I've gotten to a point where I've never had money, never been there in seven years till today. But I realized that the flow wasn't coming the way I would always expect it to come. Every week I expect to get blessed. Every week I get blessed. Every single week. Not just because I'm a pastor. Even before I became a pastor, I used to experience it. And then I realized that all of a sudden, you know, things just started, you know, just remained stagnant for a while. Let me tell you what I used to do. Sometimes I would just go to the store or to the mall. I just like shoes because I love shoes. I just buy one, two, three, four. Don't buy. I just come home. My wife would say, babe, who are the owner of the shoes? I say, honestly, I don't know how I got into that store. I, I'm serious. I say, I don't know how I entered. Say, so you just drove past it. Something just pushed me inside and I bought. <laughs> and I realized that something just capped in my finances. And after some time, the Lord told me, the money I give to you is not your own. I'm the landlord. You are the caretaker. It means that there are times I say, that's what I want the money to be used for. Is yes, sir. It's not a, let me think about it. It's yes, sir. If you don't steward money right, you would always have constant financial problems. It's just like somebody who is about to have a baby. You know for nine months that a baby is coming nine months. You have impregnated the girl nine months ago. Now, nine months after, you are looking for how to pay the, 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 the delivery of the child. You are not a good steward. You had nine months to plan properly. Are you getting what I'm saying? Steward money right. Steward money right. Have entertainment fund. Have declaration fund. But have giving fund. Steward money right. Don't let all your money just be... And business owners, if you are a business owner, pay yourself salary. Don't be too... Don't, don't say my money, the company money is our money. Every time you are picking from the company money, every time transferring from company money, all the money, company money, company money, everybody get a last from your company money. Abba. Don't move too much so that they won't know I'm talking about you. Praise the Lord. Steward money right. Let me say this to you. Money is very sensitive. How you pamper and take care of it determines the flow of it in your life. Steward money. Number two. Are you with me? Steward your time. Let me read a scripture for you. Colossians chapter 4 verse 5. What are the things you must steward? Are you, are you aware that God gave you time? It's a common denominator amongst every one of us. There's one thing everybody has. It's time. God gave it to you. Steward it right. It says, it says, use your head as you live and walk amongst outsiders. Don't miss a track. Make the most of every opportunity. Another version says, don't miss time. Steward time right. There are conversations you should not keep yourself or find yourself in. Steward your time right. Look, listen to me everybody, please. Time is an allocation in destiny. Oh, let me explain it to you this way. God wants to set you into a journey a prophetic journey in destiny, apart from talents, apart from wisdom, apart from ideas that it gives to you, it gives you time. Time is a currency. It's part of your toolkit in destiny. How you spend that time that it gives to you determines the outcomes of the destiny. Are you following what I'm saying? In other words, if you are in destiny and you ought to be there in three, four, five months and you spend three out of that month 
of a five-month track race to gist and to talk yourself away, you would have the destiny, but you would not fulfill it because you have not prioritized the power of time. Still what time? Look, it is not a good thing to say every single day. I don't know how to, this day, I don't know how today went. If you keep yourself, if you catch yourself always saying that, I don't know how today went. I just don't know how today went. I just don't know how today went. Go and check what you are doing with the time. Steward time. Time is a currency you have to steward. It is what is given to you. Steward time. Praise the Lord. Some of us, you go out and you meet friends on the road. On allocated three hours gisting. You never met, you never even knew we were going to meet. You just jam. And three hours on plant. Three hours was taken out of your journey of destiny. Three hours. Does that sound? So, look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. You are a steward. Steward the time. It says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fool, but as wise. Next verse, verse 16. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeem the time. Steward your time. Praise the Lord. There's somebody under the sound of my voice. Since January, you have been saying you want to do a strategy session with yourself. This is March. You have not sat down one out of you have one. One. Some of you are already coughing because the Lord is knocking. Who is knocking your gate? Oh, is the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Still what time? Tap five people around you say, still what time? Still what time? I told one of my friends jokingly, we we're talking on the phone. I said, the time Afcon took from me, I have to get it back. Some of you, the time Big Brother has taken from you. You remember four years ago? Four years ago, Big Brother took eight, eight months out of one year. You sat down remote control. Money, you'll be working. What, what are you doing with them? Still what your time right. Praise the Lord. Number four. Number three. Still what your gifts. Remember the analogy here. It's not yours. It's God's. He's walking it through you. It's not yours. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as a good steward of the manifold, manifold grace of God. Steward your gifts. Are you following me? How do you steward your gifts? Keep getting better at the use of that gift. Keep getting better at the use of that gift. Keep getting better at the use of that gift. Listen to me. It is not spirituality that you are on a journey. For example, you see yourself or you know that you are a banker or an accountant and you are declaring that you want to get to the highest point of this banking and finance or accounting and you have not done ACCA. Is that what they call that thing? You are not stewarding your gifts. Steward your gifts. The sharper your gifts, the more valuable you are. Steward your gifts. Praise the Lord. Number five. Number four. Steward visions. In Exodus chapter 2, this is something very powerful happened in Exodus chapter 2. Look at what the Bible says here. I'm going to read chapter 2 from verse 1 to 6. A man from the family of Levi house married a Levi woman, Levite woman. The woman became pregnant and had a son. She saw that there was something special about him and hid him. And she hid him for three months. Let me just run because of time. This is the mother of Moses when Moses was giving birth to. The Bible says she saw that there was something special about the son. You know what she did? Still what in vision. She said, there's something special about this baby. 
This baby is not going to die like that. Even though they said we should cast every baby that, that we give birth to in the water. This baby is not going to die like that. So I'm going to keep this baby in a very nice place. In fact, if you read this text, the Bible says, and the woman went to a point, stayed looking who is going to come. And kept the baby there, just watch who is going to come. And then all of a sudden, the daughter of Pharaoh came. She stewarded that baby so that that baby can live. That's the baby that brought the Lord to us. The ability to steward visions. When God gives you something, usually it's a spiritual substance. The spiritual substance is supposed to be seen in the physical. How you steward a vision is when you see through the realms of the spirit, you then begin to look at the things you do naturally to bring it. You look through it. Steward visions. Many of you give up quickly the moment the vision is not working. Steward visions. I pray for somebody to understand my voice. Every lost vision in your life is restored today in the name of Jesus. Number five. I have to run because of time. Steward relationships. Steward relationships. You have a continuous pattern of serious. Let me say that again. You have a continuous pattern of serial breakups. You've, you, there is no person in your life that has spent five years. You have fought everybody. You are fighting this one, everybody, nobody, everybody, fighting everybody. Serial breakup. You don't know how to steward relationships. Every relationship God gives to you, it is important for you to steward those relationships. God gave you those relationships. You remember what I said to you before? Anything that comes to your life by God, you are a custodian of those things. Steward those things. Steward relationships. No relationships grows by itself until you steward it, protect it, guard it. Steward relationships. Number six, steward your words. Praise the Lord. Please, don't. Amen. Please. Don't be loose guard with your words. See what your words. I wrote something here. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Words kill. Words give life. They are either poison or fruits. You choose. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 20. Don't badmouth your leaders. Don't even, not even under your breath. And don't abuse your better even in the privacy of your home. Loose talk as a way of getting picked up and spread around. Little birds drop the crumbs of your gossip far and wide. Did you see that? Steward your words. How do you steward your words? Know what you say and what you don't say. And steward your words in, in a prophetic way for your vision. See what Jesus did. Jesus would tell his disciples, so shall the son of man die and after three days he will resurrect again. He was stewarding his words. In other words, he will, you will never see what you have not said. So he was declaring about himself what was going to happen himself to himself, to him, pardon me, so that he can see the outcome of it in his life. Stewarding his words. Steward your words. Stop being a gossip. Just stop talking. You know, there are people who are serial gossipers. Say, oh, did you know that that guy just bought a new car? Oh, did you know that it, let me tell you that that thing is a spirit of time taking it's wasting your time to keep taking time out of your life please steward your words let only good and edifying words come out of your mouths that's how you steward your words listen one of the powerful things God has given to you is your words steward it right make a, make a circumcision with your mouth today that from today the only thing that comes out of my mouth is spiritual life things Still what it declares prophetic words over your life. Speak about your future. Still what your words well. Praise the Lord. Number what? Number seven. Still what diligence. The Bible says a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. It says so shall poverty. Please. Come, sir, the one with water. Water man. 
Let's put our hands together for Aquaman. Can you please come on stage? I want to show you something. Please write. Can you please lie down? Are you praying? Lie down like you want to sleep. I'm going to close up now. I want to show you. Can you all see him? Can you see him? Okay. Can you come to it? Go backwards a bit so people can see you. Can I have that? that? Can I have somebody else's bag, not my bag? Yeah, because I want to use this bag. Um, this bag represents poverty, not your bag. So, just for the analogy. So I didn't want to use my own bag. <laughs> I'm stewarding my words. <laughs> Watch this. That's not how to sleep. Sleep well now, like... You know, you know how people who, who have chosen to be poor sleep? Yeah, there's a way they sleep. Just Okay, I'm sure you don't know how to sleep that way because you have not chosen to be poor. But just stretch your leg and just act like there's nothing else remaining in life. Look at what the Bible says. Look at this. It says, a little sleep, a little somber, so shall poverty. Eh? It means poverty, the way you are sleeping, it will just drop something beside you. Let's assume this is poverty. Please, hug it. Embrace it. Just hug it. Hug it. Can you see? He's in love with the sleep, but the sleep is producing poverty. What did I say you should do? Steward diligence. You have violated your alarm clock and the alarm clock is no longer happy. You have, time to pray. Look, time to eat. Time to worship, time to, time to endure, time to, and for three months you have not done one out of the time. Now you understand why the alarm clock is not, is not speaking again. So this alarm clock is not working again. It has refused. I'm not, as sure as God help me, I'm not going to talk anymore. You have given up, you have given in, I'm, I mean, I've quit as well. Steward it right. Please put your hands together for him. Steward diligence. Number what? Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Somebody say, thank you, God, for the gift of time. Thank you, God, for the gift of money. Thank you, God, for the gift you've given to me. Thank you, God, for the gift of my future. Thank you, God, for the gift of relationship. Thank you, God, for the gift of words. Thank you, God, for the gift of diligence. Make it loud and say it with me. I will see what it right. Number three. Number eight. I love this one because I put it towards the end. I'll just give you this last one for today. Steward opportunities. Steward opportunities. This is so powerful. Let me explain something to you guys before I talk about that. How many righteous people do I have in the house today? If you're righteous and you're bold about it, just a few people in church are righteous people. If you're righteous, if you are the righteousness of God in Christ, just raise your hands. Okay, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you are righteous, say I'm righteous. What I want to talk about, I had to lay that precedent before I say it. Because I have to put a foundation for you to create that consciousness first. Why I put it last? Because last night while I was praying, the Lord said to me that there are many people who their prayers answered has walked right in front of them and they never identified it. He said they could not steal what opportunities that came that way. That's why I put this last. Please listen to what I'm about to say to you. I want to first talk about you being the righteousness of God because I'm going to use some hard statements, all right, when I start talking about stewarding opportunities. 
but I want that to be the foundation of your belief that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, everything that was once lost can be restored back. Glory to God. But listen to this. The Bible says that Elijah, I think it's James chapter 5, verse 16 or 17, says, had a nature like ours. What that meant, give me that scripture, James chapter 5, I think it's 16 or 17. Quickly, please. And then he prayed, and three and a half years, it did not rain, and then he prayed again. It says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Praise the Lord. All right, that's it. Not that scripture. Give me my iPad, please. Give the preceding verse, verse 15. Verse 17. All right, 17. Fantastic. Sorry. Amen. He says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. What is the nature like ours? If you read verse 16, it tells us what that nature is. Go back to verse 16. It says, confess your trespasses to another and to pray for one another that you may be healed. The effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. So he used the word righteous man. And then the next verse, he then says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. What is the nature like ours? It's the nature of righteousness. Now, in context to a new creation that Christ has died for, the understanding of our righteousness is being having a right standing before God. In 1 Kings chapter 17, go to 1 Kings chapter 17, I think it's verse 1. 1 Kings 17, where Elijah said, The God before whom I stand. Aha. It says, As the Lord God of Israel, of Israel lives, before whom I stand. What is righteousness? The right standing before God. In other words, when it comes to righteousness, that's what the Bible says, let us now come boldly to the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy. When it comes to righteousness, righteousness is the access card for your prayer life. Are you understanding what I'm saying there? That is, when God sees you as he sees Christ, then you can say what you want from him. You are righteous. You are righteous. I want to lay that foundation there for you, that you are righteous. But there are many righteous people that lose righteous opportunities. Look, I've said this here before, let me say it very loud again. When Jesse, the father of David, looked at him and said, take this food to your brothers. Give me the drum. Let's, let's act out something here. Like a drum roll. Okay? Who is the biggest man here in this church, in the protocol? There's this guy that, that carries the pulpit. The guy who carried the pulpit earlier today. Please come. He works like this. I like the way he works. Please run. I want to just show us something as I begin to close. You know why? Because many of you, God has heard your cries. No, no, no. He's answered your prayer. But you are not seeing the opportunities. You are not stewarding opportunities. You are too lethargic with opportunities. You have to learn how to steward opportunities. The only thing you thought about stewardship is when it comes to serving in God's house. And that's part of it. I'm going to talk about that. But you still want everything he gives to you, including opportunity, time and chance. So here comes Goliath. Just stay very oh my God. Make sure you fall down. Watch this. Jesse 
calls his father his son and says let's, 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 let's show a little bit of drama to this P.D. come and pastor please come come and stay here these are my elder brothers I'm David you see how I'm, I'm sorting my words right I keep choosing the, the good ones move here Joe you want to take David act on it they die for fame now so this is, this is um, the, the brothers of, of, of David. Who's going to be Jesse for me? Pastor, please come. This is the father of David. So, um, does anyone have food or anything there? Do you have anything that we can represent as? Oh, you brought food to church. Why am I just throwing gas at people today? <laughs> Are you laughing? You're not stewarding, you're laughing right. Steward laughter. Thank you. So, it says, go and give your brothers food for the battle. And um, let's get Saul. Please come. You don't look like Saul, but you have his. So let's assume this is Saul. So, both of you just stand like face each other. Face each other. Saul, please come here. Thank you. Um, I need a stone. Somebody should help me get a stone outside very quickly. I, I, I really want this to mark your mind when it comes to opportunities. Because I prayed last night and the Lord said, many people have their next level right in front of them, but they can't see it. But they have been praying and they are still praying. An opportunity only has one word that it understands, time. Once you lose the time of opportunities, you have to recreate another opportunity. It's time. You have to seize moments. You have to seize moments. Praise the Lord. Look, I heard a story of one of the biggest rap artists in the world. I don't want to say he, listen to this. He went to the studio while they were recording a song. And as he entered into the studio while they were recording a song, he was hearing the song and he said to them, oh, okay. This is what is landing on your head today. Just watch this. He said to them, oh, that he wants to drop his voice. I mean, he had no business. He was not a musician. He just, and he got to the studio, they were recording a song and he just puts his voice laid on the song. Uh, you know those, I wanna, I wanna, yo, yo, yo. They released the song, boom, the song blew up. When they are writing Grammy Award winners, they will call his name. They call his name. Till tomorrow is making money from realities from it. Because of someone who can see, ah, one of the best gifts God can give you is the ability to be able to see potentials in people and in things. Oh my God. That is, you can look at a vision like the new and you can see the potential beyond what it is now and steward it yourself inside. Ah, they missed what I said there. Let me leave it. Praise the Lord. Let me continue. So, it's giving me food to go and give my brothers. So I'm going to need drum roll. has done uh, Boy Scouts before. <laughs> Please, I beg you, just delete every part of this sermon that I've been throwing. Just delete it. <laughs> now I'm getting distracted. Dude. Just, this bedu. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> What's going on this morning? I'm still holding it right here. <laughs> so, let's go now. Let's go. So, this is David. The only knowledge David had about warfare and battle was when his brothers were not there, his father was not there. He was turning to the bear, to the sheep, and he fought the lion, and he fought the bears. That's the only knowledge he had. Never fought a human being. There was no account of that before. That he fought a human being. Not like even Goliath. He fought animals. 
animals cannot have sense than human beings. He could as well just lay trap for them and cut them over there. So his father says, okay, take food. Remember, go and give your brothers. He took the bread and was waiting to meet his brother. In other words, through service, service is close to men but open to God. You can see what service into destiny as well. It means kingship was waiting for him on the other side by killing Goliath. But service is the thing that will take him to kingship. Are you getting what I'm saying? Oh, I feel an anointing right here. Service is the thing that will take him to kingship. So he took the bread and was going. And he got there and saw the turmoil, the commotion. And right there, no knowledge of Harvard, no knowledge of business. He said, what is going on here? How come there is a war going on here? His mind was already tingling opportunities. 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 Look at the next thing he said. The brother said to him, what are you doing here? What are you doing? Go back home. He said, please leave me alone, John. I came here to give you food. Take the food I came to give you. Then he went out and started asking, what would be the reward of whosoever kills Goliath? Oh, I thought you came to give me food. I thought food was the thing you came for. I thought the board meeting you were going for was only to follow your boss. I hope you know that when you follow your boss, open your ears. What opportunity... Oh my God. What opportunities exist in that board meeting? What opportunity exists in that conversation? What opportunity exists in that... Are you getting what I'm saying here? So he said, what is the thing you are going to give? He said, oh, he's going to marry the, the daughter of the king. Very, very good. He says to the guy, I want to kill this Goliath. He says, look, you've never fought battles before. You can kill Goliath. You don't have the power. You don't have the strength. But yes, I'm a king and I need to kill this Goliath. This is what we're going to do. Take my shield. Take my sword. And go fight. Thank God for people that can trust. Thank God for leaders that can trust people that have no opportunities and support in the creation of the opportunities. He says, okay, go and fight. He says, this thing is too heavy for me. I've never won a battle with this before. I've never tried this way of winning before. Take this thing off me. Take the sword off me and give me the stone. Give me what I'm used to. Give me what I'm used to. You see the interesting part of it? Listen to this. There was never a time God sent David a message. God did not say go and kill Goliath. God never said today your JD David is to kill Goliath. No, I know I have to wait my way to opportunities. I have to create doors. Listen to me, children of God. If you are trying to work for doors of opportunities and you can find no doors of opportunities, create your own door of opportunity. Not those doors of the opportunities yourself and push yourself inside those doors. You know what he did next? He got the stone. And as David stood before him, who had thou all circumcised Philistine before the children of God? Do you know what this guy said? He says, you come with me with slings. You can come with me with all of these things. He said, that's fine. And I come with you with the name of the mighty one, Yeshua Amashia, the God of opportunity. I'm a custodian. Do you see what he was saying there? I'm the custodian. He is the source. I'm the custodian. He is the owner. I'm only coming in his name. He didn't say, I come in the name of David. He says, I come in the name of the king and the armies of angels of the heaven. That's the name in which I come with. So he took the stone. And this guy was thinking it was a joke. He think it was a joke. He wrote the thing once. Whoa! Fall down, Will. the others were killing while the others were killing while the others were doing strategy sometimes strategy is not what you need sometimes going is what you need sometimes strategy is not what you need they were strategizing how are we going to kill Goliath how are we going to kill Goliath do you know that if anybody amongst the thousands of people in the Israelites called before Goliath and said the same thing let me tell you what killed Goliath it was not the stone that killed Goliath it was the strength of the armies of heaven Yeshua Mashiach the Lord of hosts Jehovah Sabbath the Lord of the are you getting what I'm saying 
That's what killed this guy. When right, through the stone, created opportunities. And the next thing that happened, David had killed 1,000. Saul had killed 1,000. David has killed 10,000 by creating one opportunities. Look at how one opportunity created series of other opportunities for him. One door that is open opens many other doors for you. One door that is open opens many other doors for you. This is what it means to fight more than you can chew. To go forth and fight the battles by creating those opportunities. He created his opportunities by himself. Do you know what happened there? God never said who sent you a message. That's what you've been taught. There are things you are not going to hear a word for. But according to the pattern, you know it's I tie God. Why would a Philistine stand against us? No, it's not God. And he created the opportunity for his glorification. Steward opportunities. When you see it, seize it. That's my chat to you this week. When you see it, seize it. Seize it. Create series of doorways out of one. Series of doorway. Then David's journey started from a guy who fought Goliath and won Goliath now became a choir master playing the harp. Now became the general of the army. Now became the king of Israel. Now became a prophet. You see how one door of opportunity alighted grace on his life. I hope you know that by after the battle was over, the way they will be seeing David was different. Listen, when the Bible says, when they perceive the grace upon my life, they extended the right hand of fellowship. Sometimes the things that you do is what will make them perceive it. That grace has always been there before. The problem is they said when they perceived, in other words, that grace was there all along. It was at the time they could perceive it. They extended right hand of fellowship. The reason why people are not extending right hand of fellowship to some of us is because they can't perceive anything that you are doing. Go fight those Goliaths and seize those opportunities. Steward opportunities of God given to you. Sometimes you have only few chances to do it because destiny is timing. Destiny is timing. I charge you today, go as David and steward the opportunities of God in your life and create the channels of your next level and the authority of Jesus. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Church, can you do better and let's appreciate our pastor this morning? Wow. Somebody say, I go as David. And I steward the opportunities that God has given me. Let's have our seats. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. We'll be giving our seats in a few minutes. And um, we'll be also be taking the announcements and welcoming a guest. Um, if you want to give an offering, um, a tithe, a uh, free will offering, or you have uh, a special seed as well, you, there are various opportunities for you to do that. You can use the account number displayed on the screen, or you can also use an envelope. Our ushers, the Herald team, they are walking around. You can just wave your right hand, and they'll be sure to uh, minister to you and hand an envelope over to you this morning. All right, very important. If you want to, just wave your hands and they'll be sure to uh, minister to you quickly. Uh, yes, let's, let's do that. Um, let's do that. You know, last week, um, Dr. K gave us an assignment to study the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9. And in that scripture, you see a grace that was manifested in a church. But the Bible says that that grace was bestowed upon them. In other words, there was an owner of the grace 
and they were just yielding to the custody of the grace that was bestowed upon them right i would like somebody this morning because you may think that one grace is going to come upon you for giving it actually already belongs to you it actually sorry it actually has been bestowed upon you uh, bible says that god is able to make all grace to abound towards you so what you need to do in giving is to yield to that grace that has been bestowed upon you uh, consciously and say god uh, i allow you to instruct me in my giving and he will <laughs> he will show you opportunities and restore in the name of jesus amen and amen and amen hallelujah let's pray and release our faith as we give this morning um, this is not just a transfer this is not something you're just sending no uh, this is a spiritual exercise so we give let's let's pray over our seats this morning father in the name of jesus we thank you for that which you have blessed us with and in response to your love and the grace that has been bestowed upon us uh, we give this morning in thanksgiving lord jesus you are a high priest as we put this in your hands thank you because it multiplies it multiplies back to us good measure pressed down shaken together running over men keep giving to our bosom thank you lord for bigger greater mightier opportunities for the wealth transfer and total life prosperity thank you lord because we prosper and we are in health even as our souls prosperous. Thank you, Lord. We enter into prosperity where no sorrow is added in the name of Jesus. And the believing church said, Amen. Amen. Let's give our seats in faith. You know, if you still want to give, if you're online as well, I'd like you to be partaking this. And um, we can take a picture of the um, account number. Uh, you can still, if you still need an envelope, the ushers will wait on us. And then let's do this very, very intentionally. Somebody say, I hear. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. First of all, a beautiful announcement. The new Birmingham starts today. <laughs> Glory be to God. I thought you rejoice and shout to the Lord. God is increasing us and expanding us. Uh, those words uh, are finding expression. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So if you can, you know, know someone that lives in the Birmingham area. The new has come. The old is done with. The new has come hallelujah glory be to god number two um this week um you can go on chima this week um between 7 a.m and 7 30 on youtube god has laid it on our pastor's heart for a whirlwind of testimony somebody rejoice to the lord we experienced a wave after, during the period during the feast and after the feast there was a, a lot of declarations um, under the anointing declarations by faith um, you see um, a pastor is God's gift to us and um, as God gives him words and gives him um, messages he, uh, he, he declares them over us and we've seen the manifestation my wife and I have been privileged to see this manifestation in our lives. So it's not something that is over the top. It's something real. And there are countless testimonies amongst us as well. People getting new jobs. People seeing provision. People walking in healing. People see, getting into bigger opportunities in their business. People making progress maritally. So God has given him words for us. So this week, somebody says 7 a.m. Church, I'd like to hear you this morning. 7 a.m. to 7.30 on youtube monday to friday come on say it monday to friday tell your neighbor i hope to see you there you should be there tell that neighbor you should be there you should be there so you wake up in the morning set your alarms we'll send out all the um, the links as well in the church groups and so on and we need you to be part of it powerfully hallelujah glory be to god on tuesday evening we have a special worship session with nosa somebody make some noise to the lord testimony is a special worship service and a live recording so you want to be part of it you know if you want to go global hey say i saw you i saw you you know i have seen my colleagues attend some um, live recordings and it's beautiful to see them so it's time for you to amen hallelujah so this tuesday um it's a live recording by 6 30 we'll be having a session it's a worship service and it's also going to be a live recording with nosa so you want to be part of that tell someone beside you say you should be there 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This Friday, we have a special push prayer with um, Dr. K. Uh, it's going to be um, very early in the morning. By okay, this Early in the morning. It's Friday in Chicago, but it's early in the morning here in Nigeria by 4 a.m. up thereabouts. All right? So it's going to be a live um, time of prayer. Hallelujah. On Saturday, all the men in the house can I hear some noise. All right. We're having our beautiful hangout on Friday. On Saturday... Um, so we need you to please register, um, you know, yes, just um, scan the QR code so we know how many people are coming and then we'll be able to cater to all of us. Hallelujah. So we need you to please register and we have all the guys in the house. We have an amazing time. This Sunday, we are having incense. Somebody shout incense. Okay, I'll, I'll try that again. Somebody shout Incense. So we're having a special worship service. It's Easter Sunday. This season, you will worship God and he will, he will minister to you. Hallelujah. You will feel his manifest presence in your life. So this Sunday, we're having incense. Uh, it's going to be a live service here at 10 a.m. And it's going to be a powerful way to have the Easter celebrations. And then on Monday, Monday, the very first of April, we're having our very first are Goshen fast for the next quarter in 2024. So there are two sessions on that day in the morning. There are going to be prayers by 6 a.m. West African time on Mixellar. And then in the evening on YouTube by 7 p.m., we'll be having a session with our father, Dr. K. So there are a lot of things that we have packed um, for the next few days. But tell someone beside you, I don't want you to miss any part. I don't want you to miss any part. So throughout this week, every morning, um, a whirlwind a whirlwind of testimonies. On Tuesday, we have the live recording with Nosa. On, uh, on Friday, stroke Saturday, we have prayers with our father, Dr. K. On Saturday, we have the men's hangout. On Sunday, it's incense. And then on Monday, to cap off a beautiful time and a beautiful session, we'll be having our Goshen fast. On that day, we're supposed to fast, take time out of food, no eating chicken, no eating anything. You just fast and pray. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Please have a look at somebody beside you and say, uh, uh, how are you? I hope you had a good time in service today. Did you learn something? By the way, is today your first time? Have you come to experience the new before? If it's your neighbor's first time, I'd like you to raise your right hand. Wow, come on church, let's celebrate our first timers. Let's celebrate them. We are indeed grateful that you showed up. Somebody invited you or you stumbled on our ad on Instagram or somewhere. You saw a post somewhere. And then here you are. Church, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Thank you so much for coming. We deeply, deeply uh, appreciate you. You honored us with your invite and we're so excited to have you. Um, after this service, we have a short reception for you to give you um, a lot more information about who we are and uh, what we do in the new and what God has called us to do to raise a supernatural army. And we hope that at some point you join this army uh, in the near future. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Somebody ready to go home? Are you ready to go home? Come on, let's rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to be taking our creed. It's our declaration of faith, our declaration of what God has called us to become. And I want you to declare this with us. Declare it by faith, with conviction in your heart. Come on, let's go. One, two, ready and go. I am the new. I have no taste for my religion without change. I live a result-oriented, purpose-driven life based on principles in God's Word. I'm a man of the Word. I'm yielded to the Spirit and committed to God's purpose for my life. I take my place in God's supernatural army and His agenda for the earth and my generation. I bring great joy to my city. Come on, shout! As sure as God helps me, I will not give up. I will not cave in. I will not quit. I will not fail. I will not fear. I will not die until my job is done and victory is won. I am the new and I love this church. God bless you. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful.